Hi again. Uh, this is a small uh, video vignette that I'm making in order to someone who is interested in the program, the screen at our package after the presentation to apply it, it in uh, his own research, making things easier for him to find the most relevant publications for a meta-analysis uh, and use it. So uh, just to install it, you just need this DevTools, pa DevTools package. And then you just uh, run this command here and directly uh, you have everything needed to uh, run ScreenEdar from GitHub. You load the library and uh, uh, now you are ready to go. Uh, as I mentioned before in the Actually, in the presentation, you have an initial search, which is uh, from for your meta-analysis or a systematic review. Here is already included. It's a search that uh, made from uh, the publication that uh, I mentioned in the presentation. <clears throat> to take this CSV file, actually, you just need to go to PubMed and after uh, actually running a search, com conducting a search, you just press save and you can uh, select all results here and format CSV in order to create this uh, CSV file that I showed you before. Uh, there is an alternative. You can just take the PMID numbers only in a text file by taking this uh, choice here. But uh, in program, you just need this, is used this CSV here. It is actually this one. And uh, I'm taking these PMIDs, which are actually 581 from all the publications that uh, produced from the search, okay? And uh, um, this is the initial PMID, and this this the known PMID is actually a prerequisite of the program. There are there are five publications that I'm quite sure that they belong to the study, and I want to find all the rest. Right, so we need to have this, and uh, after that. You're just starting directly by applying screen med uh, function here. And uh, it has an output, a cluster, and an input is actually these two that I mentioned before. This number, which is between these numbers here, and it is quite useful. It is actually the input of this uh, remove sparse terms function of TM packets. I don't want to be, I don't want to confuse you for more info. I'm just telling you, you just need to take this number here. It just deletes specific text, specific uh, words, or uh, in order to make your, uh, uh, your search, uh, your grouping uh, better. And uh, this number is actually the number of groups that you want to divide the initial sets, right? Uh, <clears throat> so um, the output are actually from this, you will see that the A cluster has is a list of uh, four outputs. It's uh, the group number, the cosine similarity that I mentioned in the presentation, clustering and missing abstracts, okay? The cosine similarity is actually the result of the cosine similarity of the first group compared to the very relative group. And the other number is the, of the second group compared with a very relative group. You see here that the difference 
is greater than 0 0.2. As, and I, as I mentioned in the presentation, it's uh, enough so as to discard the second group. Okay, and keep only the first one. But uh, uh, what the rest are doing, uh, the clustering is actually give us in which cluster its publication belongs. And this table here will give us the total number of publications that belongs to the first cluster and here to the second cluster. So you see that as the number is quite, uh, as the difference of cosine similarity is quite big between these two, the first one with the biggest cosine similarity can be kept, can be kept, and the second one can be discarded. Okay, so we discard ninety for the time being, and uh, here you could see there are some missing abstracts. It's actually uh, publications that PubMed has no abstract for them. These are usually old publications, and uh, in my case, I haven't found any relative uh, publication in these uh, abstracts, but maybe you will find something in your case. I, I applied the program for more than 10, let's say, meta-analysis, so I could say that I never found something here, but if you are unlucky, you could find, so please check these missing abstracts too. These are actually uh, as I said before, have no abstract in PubMed. So to make things even better, you just you need to just take only the winning group by this command here. This is a function that takes the winning, which is the first one group. Okay, and this is what the input is the first in order to use it, to have it. Here you see the 428 abstracts. And you can apply again screenment to this second PMID right now and see if things will go into change. Uh, here I have already the output. And you see that the cosine similarity now is opposite. You see that there are 0 0.76 for the second group and 0 0.52 for the first group. And here also the cosine similarity is uh, quite enough so as to discard the first group. And then as I mentioned before, this is the number between 99, 0, 99, 0, and 1 which in case this is not big enough, you can play a little bit with this so as to have enough cosine similarity, okay? And uh, for the second case, we have uh, this winning group. So you see, we started with, with uh, uh, 581 and now we end up with 177, which is about 30% of the initials. Okay, this is what uh, it ends the screen med uh, function, and here are the uh, the other functions that I mentioned in the presentation, uh, which is the mess clean BQ, which is actually what is doing is uh, taking the common descriptors and qualifiers actually. So here you say that you have from my initial search and the search of uh, the very relative uh, uh, publications, you, the output of this is actually all the publications that have at least 11 descriptors and at least two qualifiers in common with all of these publications here. You just add all the, the descriptors and, and the program adds all the descriptors and qualifiers, distinct descriptions and qualifiers from here. And the publications that have 11 distinct and more, or two distinct and more 
descriptors and qualifiers respectively, respectively are the ones that are produced here in the A. So if I run A, these are the publications that are actually have these in common. So to be more specific, I just want to mention what are descriptors and qualifiers in case somebody doesn't know. Uh, from here, if I, I have some, uh, let's say this publication here, and you go to the mesh terms, here are the mesh terms. All these mesh terms are descriptors and qualifiers. Actually, this is a descriptor. And after the slash, this is the qualifier, right? So that's what the program does. We have here only descriptors or descriptor and qualifier. And the program helps actually uh, applying, filtering uh, these. You can use mess by an MBQ, which is a little bit different, as I mentioned also in the presentation. Here, you just define the specific uh, uh, descriptor and specific uh, qualifier. Be very careful so as to be exactly as shown here. Okay. And then if you run it again, this time, let's say this B. So this B is actually the, uh, the publications that have the specific, these specific uh, descriptors and qualifiers included in the mesh terms. Okay. So this is how the program more or less uh, works. If somebody has some questions or anything else, I would be uh, glad uh, to help him. Uh, and uh, one can just send me an email and uh, I will explain to him everything uh, he needs to know so as to help him around the program for his research. Thank you very much for your time. Goodbye.